Hello everyone. Um, we're working on a shrug today and um, I've done a bit of it here. I've used a diamond stitch. You can use whatever stitch you like. I'll put a link in the description for the diamond stitch that was worked on by Denise. She's really fabulous, you know, from Luma Hat. And her instructions are so clear. There's no way I'm going to be able to do a better job than her. In fact, I really, really like the video she puts up on the different, different stitches. So, it's so clear and well done. So my favor to you all will be for me to put that link in my description. And you guys can go and look at it if you want to do the diamond stitch. Of course, you can do stocking net, garter, whatever stitch you like. But you have to work an 85 by 21 inch rectangle, 85 by, 29, uh, by 21, okay? Now I'm using the infinity loom here. So I have um, created this shrug and I mean, it's not yet finished as you can see, it's um, not even I think about 10, 12 inches like that. And um, the shrug is yeah, 85 by 21. Now, because I use this uh, Infinity Loom, this uh, Serenity Loom, I know that because I've done this before, I've actually made a swatch and then checked how many pegs 6 inches was. And it's 20 pegs is 6 inches. So if I want um, a 21 inch width, that's 21 times by 20 divided by 6 which gives me 70 pegs. So I've cast on 70 pegs, you know. And for the 62 peg loom, which is the longer, the longest of the long looms in a set of four, you will need 59 pegs. 21 times by 62 divided by 22 because a 62 peg loom usually can give you about 22 inches, you know. So you will need 59 pegs if you're using the 62 peg loom. Now, whatever other loom that you might use like the cindy wood loom or the afghan loom you'll have to take a swatch and then from there calculate how much 21 inch is so you work this for 85 inches okay okay the yarn i'll be using is um this um, very very you know beautiful green emerald green i think i don't know um it's very rich this color beautiful green you know and it's 40% wool, 60% acrylic. It's a 50 gram ball, but it's very long. It's about 150 meters or 164 yards. It uses 3.5 to 4 millimeter knitting needles or crochet hook. This is the yarn I'll be using. Now, I think, you see, I've worked one ball. I used about, maybe for 10 inches, I need about a ball, one ball. So I ate an 85 inches would mean that I need eight and a half balls of this type of yarn. That's one way you can calculate. Of course, it doesn't help if you go to the yarn store and they don't have a lot of the color that you want and you're not sure how much you need because you want to go back home and then you work the swatch. And after you have seen how much it can work, then you go back to the yarn store and they don't have the yarn anymore. So the fact that, you know, the weight of the yarn doesn't really tell you how much how many balls you will need it's the length here this 150 meters to 164 yards if your yarn gives you around 164 yards or 150 meters depending on whether you go more comfortable with the met the uh, the measurements of meters or feet which is converted into yards you can then realize that since i told you eight and a half balls for a yarn that can give you this amount if it if it is worked you know so from there you have a general idea of how much wool you might need now the shrug itself is made up very very i i think it's a very intelligent way to make up a shrug you know it's very unusual it's not the usual way that you sew up a shrug you know and i'll show you how to do it once we have the 85 by 21 and i hope um uh, we'll come back when you have uh, done the 85 by 21 now, uh, there's one other thing. When you're doing the diamond stitcher, as uh, shown by Denise, if you, I want, I'll just show you briefly how it is, but seriously, she has a very good video, the one that I've linked, and you really don't, uh, you should watch that. It will show you exactly how to do the diamond stitch 
it's done in four rows now the easy way because you know all of us sometimes have to stop the work halfway you know when we are working on on a stitch so i've taken these kind of like stitch holders like these you know so when i do one row the first row is a knit row i take one and put it aside okay then when i come to the next row the row where you do the normal figure eight and then the jump figure eight i put a next one there then i do the knit row again that is um the knit row is always e wrap eh? e wrap knit and then the knit normal figure eight and the jump figure eight for the last one so this way once you at a glance when you see which are the colored stitch markers i mean you don't have to have colors you can have like four thumb tags or something you know you can use anything that is small enough just to keep count you already know which row you're on believe me even if you have a fabulous memory you let's say you had to put down the work and go and do something and before you know it half a day has passed and you come back and you think goodness was i on the second knit row or was i on still on the first so the best thing to do is to mark off the rows with something as you do them so every time you do four you stop and try as much as possible to finish every four rows don't don't finish somewhere in the middle you know unless you have to so this is just some you know public service announcement just want to help you guys out you know just in case you will you find yourself in a position where you are missing rows because all this kind of work where you've got stitches that require you to do more you know in they they come in um, like every six rows is a pattern or every three rows is a pattern you will have a tendency to miss something out okay okay guys um i just wanted to tell you that um i got a new phone so hopefully the video itself is a lot better than uh what it was before not sure whether this recording or not one sec okay. the phone's um one plus two my son got it for me when he came back from beijing he went there to study oriental studies and it's a great phone and it only cost 200 euro i don't understand why people spend so much money on samsung's and iphone waste it and then after a year they change it when you can spend a little and get an awesome phone like this and uh, it's called one plus two really nice phone okay now i'm going to show you how to do the um diamond stitch i'm just going to give you the a few tips all right firstly have something like pins or something that of different colors like this so that you can mark off the rows every time you're doing a row you put down a pin then when you're doing the next row so this way because on a piece like this that's quite long like this you don't want to make a mistake and not remember which row you are on you see i don't know whether you can see the stitches this is the diamond stitch i've done about almost 30 maybe 37 uh, inches of it i've still got quite a ways to go all right so i'm going to just show you this um, diamond stitch now luma hat denise you know from luma hat has a very very good video on youtube that you can follow but here is my little instruction now the first row okay now you take off all this and just put only one okay first one so the first row you just knit now there is a small problem with when you come back towards the end here i just want to point this out no it always ends because of the figure eight that you do here the figure eight it will always end on the second um peg you know so you do an e wrap knit for the first row i think you all know how to do the e wrap knit shouldn't be a problem just wrap and then knit okay wrap knit wrap knit usually what i do is i just do a few
I'm using the infin um, Serenity Loom because I wanted the closer stitch this gives, you know. Now this is going to be quite long, so this is the first row of the four row stitch or diamond stitch. Be back in a bit when I'm on the other side. Now, we're going to do the second row. Now firstly, put your little colored pin down so that you know you're on your second row. Now the second row, I wonder whether you can see or not here. All right. Um, it down here now the second row you start off with a normal figure eight this is a normal figure eight and eh? one that does that okay that's a normal figure eight now if you are doing the skip figure eight this is a normal figure eight where you do this this is normal if you're doing the skip figure eight you will skip this peg here you will skip this is the last peg okay i've marked it with a, a another stitch holder down here so that i don't miss where i stopped now if you're doing the skip figure eight you will miss this and then jump to the third peg and then do that but the first part of the second row you just do a normal figure eight okay that's a normal figure eight and then after you do the normal figure eight you then, now the, the yarn is coming out from this peg here, this peg. You skip this peg and jump to this one, the third one. And you go back to the second peg. That is a skip figure eight because you skip one stitch. And now from there onwards, you keep on doing that. You skip one peg, you skip this peg. Hang on. This is where the yarn is coming out from. Here, skip this, um, skip this peg here, and jump to the third peg and do it. I know it's a bit difficult to see. If you can't follow what I'm saying, just look at Luma Hat Denise. Now you go down all the way doing this skip figure eight, and we'll stop and we'll come back on the row after that, the third row. Now the third row. Now don't forget, bring your third colored thing whatever you can use whatever colored stuff that you have so that you don't mix up now the third row same thing e wrap knit now here this one you will start from here you know but because i done the other one quite a bit about 10 inches in that so this time round i'm doing it this way okay so let's do an e wrap knit all all round which is easy everybody knows how to e-wrap knit so do that and then we'll come back when it's the fourth row now we're doing the fourth row don't forget your counter you can use anything like you know, even checkers you know the chinese checkers pieces or something they're different colors no now they've got six different colors actually the chinese checkers now this this is the last row of the um, diamond stitch now the last row is a bit different from the second row here what you do is you knit the first peg this one you skip huh? the first peg you knit then you do a normal figure eight here which will end with on this peg then from here you do a skip figure eight okay first you do the normal um, knit then you do the figure eight then you do the skip figure eight it's coming out from here this peg skip this one jump to the third and go back to the second that's it finish and then you're done with the diamond stitch and you keep on doing the skip figure eight after this And you have your pattern stitch for the rest of the shrug. Okay. Now, I just wanted to point out something. Now, you see, whenever you finish the four rows that you're supposed to be doing, 
because each of the diamond stitch row, the first row of the four rows is a knit row. And if you notice here, you are on the second peg when you finish, right? Now, what you do is that you don't go back and work this peg. You just continue with the third peg and do your knit row. Each time, don't try to go back to the first peg. Never do that. Because if you go back to the first peg, which I did for like, um, I don't know, maybe around 20 inches, I've got a, one, one side of my work is slightly longer than the other side, you know. So don't do that. Don't make that mistake, you know. And, you know, really, I've almost finished up to 80 inches. So I'm not going to go back and uh, redo this. So start from the third peg and work your first row of knit. Then when you come back, when you are here, this is the last peg of the first row. And you're going back, you do the normal figure eight and then you do the skip figure eight and you finish the second row. And the third row is again another knit row. And again, when you come to the third row, you will be ending here. Continue on the third peg from here. Third peg and continue with the knit again. And then when you reach here, you will do the final row, which is a knit, then a normal figure eight, and then the skip figure eight for you to complete the four row diamond stitch. Okay, I have finished the um, working of this, um, it looks like a shawl, you know, this whole piece and it is exactly 80 and what you need to do is first of all you fold it in half, alright? You fold it in half and mark it here, the half point. the half point i'm just going to roughly do this you know of course when you do it do it a bit more precisely you know because i'm just going to give you an idea on how to make up the sh the shrug okay now um i just want to show you this is about should be around 40 because i folded it see 40 so it's about 80 you know I have another one that I have made before, which is 60 inches. This is the 80 inch one. And then you can compare which one you like better and um, make it according to the one that you like better. I fell down a few weeks back and uh, I've hurt my knee, you know. So I can't really kneel down very well while I'm working on the floor like this. Now, after you have marked it like this in the center all right now what you do is that now watch this very carefully yeah okay first of all it has to appear in the camera now you need to place it side by side you know after you've folded it you place it side by side That means you're not really actually folding it, you know. What you're doing is that you're placing it side by side here. Okay. Okay, you see that? So you place it side by side and you sew about 10 centimeters here at the end. Sew about 10 centimeters here. At the end part. You place it side by side and sew this part together. Okay? Sew it up for about 10 centimeters, which is about 4 inches up. Okay? As you can see, I have just pinned up the 10, uh, the 10 centimeters here. You only sew 10 centimeters. This what it does basically is lengthens the width of the shrug here, you know, by doing that. You get a wider side, you know, so that it covers your back when you use it. So you've done 10 centimeters here. And as you can see, it's placed side by side. Make sure that you don't twist it. Eh? Can you see that? It's, it's exactly goes around like that. Okay. All right. Now you've sewn that. 
Now, what you do is that here, you see this? This is the inner part of the... Okay, now, I think further, you can see that now, right? That's the part that I've sewn there. Now, here... Now, this one is the inner part of the... So the this is the center, one of the parts that you mark. Don't take this part. Take the outer edge here. Put it onto this place here. And all along here, join it to the width that you just created. Join it all up here. From here, join this all the way until the end here. And that's all you have to do. One side and take the other side and join it here. After you have finished joining, you would have finished your shrug. So it's a very simple thing to do. It's a very simple makeup for the shrug. I'll pin this up and show you once I have joined this, how the shrug is to appear. So this part again, because it was important. I put the things back and put my knee on it. Now, um, here is the part where you sewed it, okay? This is the whole uh, width of the... This is the width of the shrug, okay? This is the part that I asked you to sew earlier, which is 4 inches or 10 centimeters. Now, this part of it, you see the way that it lies side by side here, no? Hang on, let me get it into the camera. Okay. Okay, now. Now, here... As you can see, this is the inner part of the join. Alright? That is the part that you joined here. Now, this is the part, the inner part. Okay? Don't take the inner part. Don't take the inner part. This is the outer part of the whole thing. This is the part that you take and join here. All along. Join it all along. From here to here. Okay? Hope you got that. Okay, now what I've done is that I've joined everything, okay? You can have a look here. I've joined it. Okay, this one is... I need one more thing here. All right, now see, this is where I joined that top part that I showed you to the width of the to the width of the side. Now, once you have sewn that up, if you turn it, you get yourself a shrug. Can you see that? Can you see that? That's how the shrug would look. At the back, it would look like that, where it's joined, you know? Here. This is the part that you join in the beginning. And this is the part that you will join later. So the shrug will have a kind of like a V look on the back. And this is the shoulder part. And this is the front. Okay? After I've sewn it all up, I'll, I'll show you. And I'll also show you the one that I did with 60 inches. This is the 80 inch one to point out something eh? the very first part eh? be sure that you have your wrong side up eh, when you're joining the 10 centimeters i've already done the join for the four inch 10 centimeters then i'll be taking the outer end here and so i'll work it from the center first where's my little yeah i work it from the center first and outwards you know it, that's the way it's a better way to join it but of course you pin it up first before you start joining the two shrugs side by side of course the emerald one is uh, the 80 inch one and that one there the small mint green one with black is um 60 inches i'll wear them both and uh, do a small fashion show so that you can see the difference between the two but yes you can see the construction is basically the same 
Only thing is that the one, the ephemeral one is much larger than the other one. Now, in the beginning of my video, I did say 85 inches, but this one I only made it 80 inches. So you can do it around 80, you know. It will reach around your hips and slightly above, no, upper hips. So if you want it slightly longer to cover your hips, you'll have to go for 85. Okay? Okay, this is a very good comparison, as you can see. The size difference okay just wanted to explain about this um, particular shrug you know the one that the, the shorter shrug the 60 inch one this one was done on the 41 peg round loom so it's about the measurements is 60 by 18 60 by 17 60 17 18 by 60 that's depending on your yarn and how you uh, knit on the loom that's how how much um, this one i use two colors it's a very light mint and uh, mint and the black and they're thick threads you know so only two strands but they're pretty thick it's done on that fat pegs on the 41 peg round loom and the other one was 21 by 80 so you see that's the reason why this one fits very much more snugly so if you want a snugger something that fits you more snugly um, I suggest you don't do a 21 you should try for an 18 and you can keep the length for the longer shrug you can do it by 80 or 85 depending on whether you want it below your hips 85 by 18 or 19 and um, because mine was 80 by 21 as you can see it's a pretty loose shrug you know so anyway I hope you try these two patterns out whichever the 60 or the 80 or the 85 and happy looming